Hello, this is Richard from HK Audio. We're in Limburg, Germany today with Angelo Kelly and family for an Angelo Kelly traditional Irish Christmas. So come in, let's go and have a look. So we're here on stage with Angelo and Sean. So Angelo, let's just start talking about the premium pro setup that you've got here on the stage for your monitoring system. Tell us a bit about it. Well, basically, we we're working with in-ear on this tour because we're trying to get you know the signals a bit uh, clean. But I always feel that I'm missing something. So I have one in-ear, um, but we have two monitors here and two on the other side, giving us just that extra live feeling, and uh, we don't have to you know crank it up too much uh, so we've got the pro series here uh, the new ones and they're they're fantastic uh, very clean um, more yeah more just a clean sound not too much bottom not too much rock just a very clean sound and for this what we're doing it's a very acoustic show a very folk Irish folk show so it fits perfect and right in front are the near, f- near fields um, that's the the contour series um, we have four of those because for the first couple of rows that's necessary and then you know then the big boys up there they take it over but sean what do you think yeah we've got uh, with the contour series in the front we've got with the cahedra we've got 80 degrees opening angle so we will need in venues like this we've got a relatively wide stage we will need a near feel for quite a bit and that's what I like about them is it's not just a one row near fill. You can actually go three, four, yeah. five rows without hurting the first row, which I think is very nice. Again, like everything I've heard from HK, very clear, um, almost crisp, which is, I suppose is a question of uh, taste, but um, it's easier to work with than a lot of boomy systems that you have, especially the Cohedra. Um, and I'm quite surprised by the basis we've got. We've got the double 10 inch, um, eight on each side. Um, and I was a bit skeptical, but I'm very surprised. Uh, the bass is the thing that's the most fun about this show. Actually, <laughs> it's uh, uh, every time we got we got like bass drum pedals, triggered bass drum pedals, and uh, this, this pedal here is actually sorry. Uh, that's I okay. Speak to the mic. <laughs> this pedal here. Um, we're not talking about HK anymore. I know, but it's it's a folk Irish folk show. But I have to have a pedal with a kind of a little bass drum sound because when a thousand, two thousand people start clapping on all four, they're gone. You know, we just so I, I hold them together this way, so and uh, the well, we have a baron player and we have you know a, a great trad band going. But uh, when everything's you know very up tempo, um, people need that that pulse. And that pulse, latest then, is when the bases here uh, from you guys just really do their job. <laughs> what would the challenges be for you then, Sean, during the show itself? What, what are you doing with the monitor mixes and the in-ear mixes that we talked about? I imagine it gets a little bit complicated, doesn't it? Um, I, you would think so, but it doesn't actually. It's not that complicated. Um, the initial setup is a bit more complicated. What we just did to have complete control and independent sound control is that we've split it all inputs all vocal inputs in the mixing desk so we've got sound sound processing for the stage in ears and we've got sound processing for outside so that makes it relatively easy for me i can do what i want in the front um, and i just basically leave it alone we do during the sound check it's usually a bit of you know that voice a little more a little less but it stays more or less the same and because it's mainly in your based and this is just sort of for the feel of it um it doesn't get that complicated uh the monitors are the least of my worries <laughs> i mean plus we, we have timo he's not here right now but he he's on stage with uh with an ipad and he can help us during the show um but sean basically helps us in the sound check to adjust according to the hall to make sure we're happy and then we're fit to go for the show so you've got a permanent monitor engineer with iPad during the performance, actually on the stage itself. Okay. And how has that been working out for you with Sean at the moment? I mean, 
we'll learn about it a bit more in the interview, I guess, but it's actually Sean's second date of the tour. He's coming at pretty short notice to do this. H how has it been working on this time scale? Well, it's been very, working very well because uh, our main engineer, Alex, he's, um, he's just... He just had a had a child, his first kid, and so we're all very happy for him. Um, but he had Sean on on standby, and Sean was ready to go. And uh, yesterday was the first show, and it went very well. So um, he's fine. Otherwise, he wouldn't be in this interview. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might be gone afterwards. No, um, no I made uh, because because it's a quite complicated in your setup. I did make one or two minor mistakes. Um, which are not going to happen again, I hope. <laughs> no, uh, which are not going to happen again. It was just first show. There's so much you're concentrating we on. We never mentioned the vision outside. We always pretend everything's going. Yeah, no, I was, just, <laughs> I was just kidding. I was just kidding. Um, yeah, so Alex is out. I'm the new. No, <laughs> um, if with the first show in a in an existing setup, it's a bit like jumping on a moving train. Um, there's so much you're looking out for. I suppose you're bound to make little mistakes like that, and rather make a mistake like that than have I don't know the vocals off on the. PA for a second or something like that. So, um, but apart from that, it's been going surprisingly well, I have to say. But like you said, Alex has done a brilliant job setting it up and communicating with me. So, that's all. I, I mean, that's there's just good stuff to say about that, basically. Brilliant. Well, thanks very much, guys. Let's go and take a look at the big Cahedra system that we've got then. We'll see you in a minute. Right, we've moved ourselves around the stage a little bit, and in the background, you'll see the Cahedra system that Angelo and crew are using on this tour. So, Tell us a little bit about it. You start. Well, uh, first of all, it sounds amazing. I'm not a technical geek, but I'm definitely always, uh, it's very important for me to be to be happy with the sound. And uh, I've been a solo artist for over 10 years now, and I've not, I've not had one gig without HK uh, Audio. But this tour is the first tour where I really have a huge uh, line array system, the Cohedra system. And uh, today we have 10 tops. Um, because uh, this venue fits, fits about 1,200, and some other venues will need a few more tops, so we can, we're flexible, you know? Yeah, especially here, um, just for the size of it, maybe I, I would, eight would have sufficed, but um, we've got this weird balcony situation going on, which obviously every day a new challenge. Um, so um, with line arrays, what you normally don't want to do is sort of open it too wide, which is, I suppose, uh, logical thing but the balconies face it's, it's at an angle so if I actually have a speaker pointing at it I will kill those rows just beneath below it oh that's uh, fine you that's can, you <laughs> can, you can no but that's that's why I went for three tops for the for the for the top to have a you know have a good coverage and not just one or two speakers which in a line array everybody who works with line arrays will know always turns out in disasters phasing wise and uh, uh, frequency wise yeah. so we've got um, good phase up there good frequency response up there um, and then I've got still got seven for like the floor um, unfortunately here the balcony is relatively low and I can't really get right to the back of under the balcony but that's like the last two rows it won't be as nice as it could be. Not as crisp and not as clear and direct, which I have found the system is. Um, but that's just something we have to live with. A sound is always a compromise. <laughs> yeah. And it's an, an acoustic-based tour and a quiet stage show, relatively speaking. But you were saying earlier, Angelo, it's a pretty hefty system. So you've got plenty of headroom for anything that you, you need to handle on this tour, haven't you? Well, the other thing is you would normally think it would be more a system for a rock show because um, it has a lot of well, I would say balls. <laughs> Can I say that? Yeah. And, and it's, it's just, you know, but, um, but I think it's, it, it, it suits our purpose because a folk and, um, yeah, a folk show, which this is, uh, needs a lot of, uh, you say in German, Menschlichkeit, a lot of, you know, human aspect coming over. So when I'm singing, that voice really goes all the way and it's not too hi-fi, it's not too digital, you know, it's, it's a real good analog system and um, does a, an amazing job, you know, yeah. Oh, fantastic. And we also noticed the interesting uh, NFI bass array that we've got down at the sides of the stage, which we might be able to pan to later on, I think. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that, Sean. Um, well, um, unfortunately, uh, I, would, I would have liked to spread them in front of the stage. That's what I did yesterday and got amazing results with it. Um, I can't do that because of safety regulations. Um, so I had to go to the side. Uh, I haven't got too much width there either. So I decided to go in fire. 
um, which I, I suppose a principle is not is nothing new. Um, it just gives us a lot of depth in the bases, yeah. um, and well, it is. He was saying it's it's not a really base bassy show, but um, there are a lot of parts where the bass sort of drives. We talked about the pedal, for example, and it's, you, you immediately notice if the bass doesn't work properly because the people, less people start clapping. It's, it just takes longer for people to get up. It's a weird thing that happens. Uh, somebody will say it's too loud, and then you turn it down a couple of dBs, and nobody will clap, or not hardly anybody. As soon as it's a sort of a peak where some people might go, it's a bit too loud, everybody stands up and claps. It was Yesterday was amazing. Well, I mean, it's, a, it's an acoustic show, and we could do it a bit less, but we choose to have, let's say, out of a thousand people, maybe two people, for them it's too loud. But for the rest, they're having the time of their life, you know, and that's more important. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, sure, no, sure. Yeah, yeah. And um, one final point about the PA was we mentioned earlier that it's flexible enough to fly it, or have it ground stacked if you want it. Um, looking at this venue here, some of the shapes are not quite what we'd call regular. Is that the biggest challenge for you guys? And have you had any problems or has it always been a case of get it in, check the venue out, find the best solution, and it just works? Well, the, the, the good thing we have is we have a stackable system and we have a system that you can, you know, have it up there. And what we often do is actually have both. Yesterday we had a show in Dortmund, the concert house, and that has a high, high ceiling, and you have people all the way up. So what we were able to do was have stacked down below uh, to for the first half of the venue, and and then we could put the, the, the line array system all the way up, pull it all the way up, and they had a great sound as well. So that worked really well. Um, so it's important to be a bit diverse because we're playing every day in a different venue, and there isn't one setup that is perfect uh, for all of them. It's not possible, you know? Um, it, it is a bit of a challenge. Um, you know, the first time you come into a, into a venue or you've seen plans beforehand, you have ideas and you've got some vague ideas of what you're going to do. But um, that, I mean, that is a general line array problem. Um, the line array initially, the idea was to have a straight floor, you know, like a festival or something like that, very long, and you've got long throw, short throw, and all that. Um, but it turns out to be very versatile. Yesterday was my first show, and we split the line array in six stacked on the floor and six flown very high I think 11 11 meters 50 maybe even 12 I did change it a bit um, and the only challenge there is the overlap that is always the well as with front fills delays it's always where it overlaps uh, it just takes a bit of work but um, any system would it's not a system problem it's just a problem of physics I suppose yeah. Well, brilliant. We're looking forward to hearing how it sounds later. Angelo, Sean, thanks very much for taking the time to talk to us, and we'll see you later. Hello there, this is Richard from HK Audio on the stage at Limburg Stadthalle in Germany and I'm here with Mr. Angelo Kelly. Angelo, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us today. It's your Irish Christmas tour mm -hmm. with your part of the, the Kelly family. Can you tell us a bit about it? How has it been going? Well, it's been going very good. Uh, we're right in the middle of the tour right now and um, it's back to back pretty much every day. So it's a, it's a tough, uh, tough tour, but we've got a good team, um, a nightliner full of people and uh, a 40 ton truck full of material a lot of it being your material um, but um, it's 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 a very successful and good tour from the atmosphere from the show from the audience and so it makes all that tough work uh, worthwhile mm. yeah. some people would say that working with their family in a big group and being cooped up in a bus for the whole time would be their idea of heaven 
others some might say the opposite but for you it seems to be this is your way of life this is your thing and you thrive upon that well there are day there are days where it's it's heaven and then there are days that are tough and everybody has to pull together and everybody has to you know help each other and uh, we're a good bunch of people um the musicians they know my my family my my wife my kids since a few years now everybody knows each other it's like an extended family so that's very important if you have one or two wrong people on board you got to make sure you cut that cancer really quick you know but i'm usually very very selective of who i have with me on tour and so this time around everything has worked out extremely well and um, so it's a joy yeah mm. Brilliant. And so tell us, what, what can the fans who couldn't make it tonight or to uh, the other dates on the tour, what can they expect from this, this Kelly Christmas tour? Well, by the time you show this, they can't expect anything because the tour <laughs> is almost done and it's all sold out. But uh, I think what they've expected so far and or what they've become, uh, uh, what we've been able to do on stage so far has been uh, uh, a Christmas show and a more of an Irish uh, setting, you know, which is very unusual. Uh, it's an idea I had a few years ago. And and the good thing about it is it enables the show to be very uplifting. It's not just one ballad after another. And at some stage you're like, okay, I get it, you know. It's it's two hours with up and down, up and down. You know, there's some ballads for, for, for you know, some maybe some tears. Um, but then there's a lot of up-tempo, standing up, clapping along, dancing, uh, that, you know, Irish jigs and reels. And, and it, it really works well together. It fits, fits extremely well. And how did the German fans react to the Irish music? Well, the Germans love Irish music. Um, it's not the main reason why I came up with the idea. It was more, I was in Ireland, I've, I've lived there for now three years, and, and I just, um, I couldn't find any, any Irish music that had Christmas in its center point. You know, I, so during the Christmas time, I was listening to Rat Pack, I was listening to you know, classical uh, uh, Christmas music, but I couldn't find Irish Christmas music. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I kind of then thought, well, I better do it myself, you know? And uh, it works very well in Germany because I can draw an audience and the idea itself, the Irish element, people love that here in Germany. But I think in other countries they do as well. I think the Irish, they don't have much to export, you know, except for some green trees and stuff. And but Butter. Butter, exactly. Um, whiskey, um, some Guinness maybe. But it's the Irish music that is definitely one of the very few things Irish have uh, that is very loved around the whole world. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you go global with it within the next couple of years. Well, we are thinking of playing some gigs in, in the States and also in China. Uh, it'll depend uh, whether we'll take the time for that. But mm. uh, there are those uh, possibilities. We'll see. Can you tell us anything about the upcoming 2017 Kelly Family Reunion tours that you're doing? Well, that's something I worked on the last two years. I was talking with all my brothers and sisters and a big majority of us, seven of us, have come together and have confirmed we're going to do three gigs in the Dortmund of Westfalenhalle. And they were all sold out within minutes. And so we're really looking forward to those gigs. Um, whether there's going to be more is not sure yet, but we were so surprised of how fast it was sold out and realized how important it is to so many people that uh, I think we'll be doing some more things. I just don't know when and uh, how concrete we can get soon. Well, we really hope that when you do those shows, the stadium shows that literally sold out within minutes, it's, it's actually crazy. Yeah. We hope that we can be there in some way to just maybe just to watch or maybe to give you something to stick on the stage or something. I, I hope so too. Um, I don't decide that on my own. But I'm going to fight for having HK Audio there because uh, that would be just one more uh, thing I don't have to worry about, you know. I mean, it's uh, going to be exciting enough, but I'd love to have just, you know, a great sound and one thing I don't have to think about anymore. I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day in the morning.